Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Thank you to the organizer that organized this special event of International Conference on Islamic Research in Management, Education, Science, and Social and Technology. My name is Zalinda Dimayusuf. My topic is assessing the effectiveness of guidance and counseling program in managing students' discipline in secondary schools in Malaysia. My slide will consist of introduction, background, theoretical framework, research design, limitation, and also conclusion. As an introduction, guidance and counseling services are important aspects of school system. It is not just for students who are involved in disciplinary issues, but also for the positive development of individuals. It is based on the main types of mentoring and counseling programs conducted in the school. In management, there are several components that teachers need to implement before planning a thorough guidance and counseling program. School counselors must lead the program, make decisions, issue guidelines, integrate program management procedure, and improve motivation and counselling. Then they have to evaluate the effectiveness of the program, identify weaknesses and problems encountered, and act to address them. From the study, because of the physiological and psychological changes, school counsellors in Malaysia routinely encounter various social problems such as truancy, drug abuse, smoking, fighting, bullying, verbal and physical violence, vandalism and other disruptive behaviour that can prevent students' academic success. The latter include questioning of family values, self-concept, personality development and emotional experiences. Due to this social emotion challenge that majority of students have been experiencing in schools, governments across the world saw the need for introduction of guidance and counselling services in secondary schools. The Education Ministry has identified a total of 402 schools nationwide as hotspots for disciplinary and drugs problem. This is by the New Street Times 2017. As for the statistic given by the Ministry of Education from the Bahagian Pengurusan Sekolah Harian, this statistic is for 2018 consists of the states and the types of the disciplinary issue by the state. As for the theoretical framework, if disciplinary issue is not addressed, it may cause damage to religion, race and nation. Prevention and treatment strategies must fit with the types of discipline problems that exist. Therefore, a counseling approach should be reviewed comprehensively to enable interventions carried out to bring positive changes to the students that have discipline problems. CTRT, which is Choice Story Reality Therapy, was chosen for a detailed discussion about psychology. Furthermore, how counselors can help students with problems of discipline based on their quality world, basic need, total behavior, and the real world. As a theoretical framework, the model is CIPP model consists of three elements, namely context, input process, and product approach. It basically provides a very systematic way of looking at many different aspects of a program development process. Now, the one is accountability bridge counseling program evaluation. For this model, it uses the program evaluation that consider an applied research discipline and is defined as a systematic process of collecting and analyzing information about efficiency, effectiveness and impact of program and services. As for a research design, this study uses qualitative approach which typically studies people or system by interacting and observing the participants in their natural environment and focusing on their meanings and interpretation. 
The purpose of the research interview is to explore the views, experiences, beliefs and motivations of individuals on specific manners. Qualitative methods such as interviews are believed to provide a deeper understanding of social phenomena. The qualitative approach was pertinent to this study because the researcher will study the participants' experiences as they occurred in natural settings, that is, in Malaysian secondary schools where the guidance and counseling strategy was implemented to maintain positive discipline. This enabled the researcher to gain an insider's views of the problem under study. For the limitation, the future of school counseling in Malaysia seems to be independent on three identifiable avenues that require major improvement to stimulate growth. The first one is theoretical orientations. Currently, there is a lack of a coherent theoretical framework for the practice of school counselling. The role of testing and assessment for school counsellors needs further qualification for counsellors to effectively incorporate them into their functions. For the research, more research is needed to help school counselling further define and refine its purpose and directions theory and practice and training framework. And the last one is clinical discoveries made through direct practice. Practicing school counsellors are in a unique position of having to, re di to discover for themselves what school counselling is, including clinical management and services. For the conclusion, the continuous improvement and revision of school guidance and counseling services are needed in ensuring quality professional services are maintained. Continued support and collaboration from all parties, especially in the Malaysian government, is crucial to enhance the test status and implementation of guidance and counseling services in Malaysian schools. It is hoped that the findings of this study will enable students to understand, to create awareness among students about the effectiveness of the guidance and counseling program in the management of students to avoid this, the, to avoid the disciplinary issues. In addition, this study is also hoped to be used by schools to formulate, enhance, and implement disciplinary issues intervention programs and safely safety measures to create a safe school environment okay that's all from me thank you